Do you want to upgrade your TMC for the best accuracy? Today, I test six barrels to determine which is best. I will be using the following barrels for this video. The stock Killhouse Headhunters 14 inch, Labco Big Assault 10 inch, J&J Ceramic 14 inch, Hammerhead Dominator 14 inch, and Tiplin's Straight Line 16 inch. The following aspects will be covered for each barrel. FPS, efficiency, consistency, accuracy, availability, and price. I used Tiplin's Combat Series paint for these tests. For the FPS tests, I shot one 19 round magazine through each barrel, recording each FPS reading and plotting them on a graph to give a rough estimate of how consistent the FPS is. Taking a look at the stock barrel for control, we can see that the highest FPS was 299, just below the maximum at most fields. The minimum clocked in at 256 FPS, giving us a 34 FPS difference. For the stock barrel, we got an average FPS of 281.3. This will be used later to determine the efficiency of the six barrels as well as the consistency. The killhouse barrel having shot FPS a little lower than stock, high FPS at 286 and the low at 260 giving us a difference of 26 FPS. The average came in slightly lower than stock at 273.6. I was a bit disappointed in the Lapco barrel as I couldn't get the FPS above 240 when I increased the airflow. But with the same airflow setting as stock, I got a high FPS of 219 and a low at 200, giving us the lowest difference in FPS of 19 and also the lowest average of 208.1. As you can see, the J&J Ceramic started relatively low and increased over time. The FPS high clocked in at 289 and a low at 245. FPS difference and average was 44 and 272.2 respectively. The Dominator being the opposite as the J&J, starting high and decreasing over time. Also clocking in at 289 high FPS and a low of 247, making the difference 42 and the average 263.6. The straight line having a relatively flat trend line except for the high and low FPS at 293 and 240, ending up to give us the highest FPS difference of 53 and an average of 265.2. For the efficiency, we will take the average FPS of each barrel and determine which one was the most efficient. The stock barrel, as mentioned, had an average FPS of 281.3. As our control, if the other barrel's FPS is higher than stock, that barrel would be more efficient. And if the FPS is lower, that barrel would be less efficient. The killhouse barrel being the most efficient out of the aftermarket barrels, but still less efficient than stock, having an average FPS of 273.6 followed by the J&J ceramic barrel with an FPS average of 272.1. Thereafter, the Tipman straight line with a massive average drop to 256.2. The Dominator right on the Tipman's heels with 263.6 FPS average. And in last place, the Lapco 10 inch barrel with an average FPS of 208.1. The Lapco barrel shooting the softest but having the most consistent FPS. That gives the Lapco barrel the first and the last place. Taking second place, once again, the Killhouse barrel having a fairly consistent FPS at 26. The stock barrel performs well enough being only stock with a relatively consistent FPS. Reaching over a 40 FPS difference, the Dominator barrel comes in at fourth place. I was quite disappointed in the inconsistency of the J&J barrel as the manufacturer boasts having an extremely consistent shot. However, with 44 FPS difference, that is concerning. The straight line barrel performing all over the show with inconsistencies, just something I wouldn't want to try out on the field. For accuracy, I won't be able to show all the footage I took due to it being a large amount. I did two tests. One, shooting from 10, 20, 30 and 40 meters and seeing what distance would be best for that specific barrel and how much correction has to be done in order to hit the target. And the second test was at 25 meters having a camera to the side of the marker to see how much the rounds drift and fly around. With a stock barrel shooting from 40 meters, two shots out of the magazine hit the target and from 30 meters, almost the whole magazine hit the target. The Lapco barrel only started to hit the target from 20 meters and then it's only about 5 out of 90. So I'd say using the Lapco barrel would be best for CQB, 20 meters and down. 
the JJ had one hit on target at 40 meters. However, most shots were close or in the vicinity of the target, close enough to let your opponent know you have him in your sights. From 30 meters, most shots hit target consistently. From the 40 meter mark, the Dominator shot horribly, with rounds flying wild, not hitting the target once. This was the same at the 30 meter mark. From 20 meters, rounds hit the target more consistently, however, there was still the odd round flying wild. Unfortunately, I forgot to hit the record button for the straight line, but the rounds went flying about similarly to the Dominator, which can be expected due to the rifling of these barrels. From 40 meters, the kill house hit the target 5 times out of 90. However, some of the rounds did fall short and two went flying wild. From 30 meters, most shots were on target. These distant shot tests was conducted on a different day than the next test. However, the results was as follow. The kill house in at number one, JJ second, stock barrel doing surprisingly well in these tests at number three, Lapko at number four, Dominator at five, and for the 25 meter shot tests, I tried to keep the marker aiming at the same point the whole time. I aimed just above the metal rod in the footage. The stock barrel gives decent accuracy, however, it does have the odd round that flies off target. Due to the Dominator having a rifled barrel, it spins the rounds while they are in the barrel. This causes the shot to be very unpredictable when using round ball. I'd suggest to save this barrel and use it for first strikes. While I used the kill house barrel as my everyday barrel, I was surprised to see that there was two shots that went flying wild. However, when using the barrel in gameplay, it doesn't disappoint. But those two shots count against the killer house in these tests. The J&J barrel performed very well, with all the shots falling in about 15 cm diameter of each other. A straight line having similar issues than the dominator due to the rifle barrel. It did however perform a little bit better. Due to the shorter barrel and lower FPS, the Lapko barrel wasn't able to shoot accurate over 25 meters. It did however shoot relatively consistent. Taking a look at the accuracy of these barrels, I conclude that the J&J barrel was the most accurate, followed by the stock barrel, Lapko, Kill House, Straight Line, and finally the Dominator. The J&J ceramic barrel is currently not available in South Africa for purchase, but it can be imported. The price you see is from J&J Performance's website. The Dominator is also not available in South Africa, but as well is importable. The small diagram on the side shows the rifling of the Dominator barrel. The price was from e -Paintball. As previously, the straight line is also not currently available in South Africa for purchase, but can be imported. The straight line comes with three sizes included for a better fit. Prices is from Eve Paintball and ANS Gear. The Lapco Big Shot Assault is available in South Africa for purchase from Blades and Triggers and in the US to cut the price from ANS Gear. The good thing about all Lapco barrels is that they come with a lifetime warranty. The Kill House is also available in South Africa from Blades and Triggers. The big plus point with the Kill House barrel is the fact that it comes with a thicker piece on the barrel for a nice snug fit into the TMC's shroud. Before I conclude this video, I would like to give a big shout out to Ravon Singh for lending me three of these barrels in order to conduct these tests. Without his contribution, this video would not have this amount of data to compare. Finally, it's conclusion time. Taking all the aspects into consideration, the results come in as follows. Having two first places, a second place and a third place. JJ Ceramic in second place with two second places, a first place and a fourth place. Third, we have the Lapco Big Shot Assault Barrel with the first, second, fourth and the last place and then second to last Dominator Barrel followed in last place with the Tipman Straight Line. For more tips and tricks with regards to MagFed, click on the playlist on the right and for some action-packed first-person view videos, click on the playlist on the left. Until next time, cheers!